what is going on fantasy people welcome to the catch it is your boy john alongside my co-host steven we are very excited to do kind of a joint uh mock fantasy football draft tonight so we're uh rolling yeah, the day pumped. steven is pumped, <laughs> I'm pumped go I'm pumped. it's the first one of the season awesome yeah man uh, so we've got a, a 12-man league going on here. We've got uh, PPR as far as the scoring format. And, uh, yeah, super excited. It will be interesting. Steven's got pick eight overall, and I have got pick nine. So we'll be picking kind of right alongside one another. But we're just here to kind of show you our draft process, our draft thoughts, uh, you know, players that we're interested in, whether we end up uh, drafting them or not, as well as uh, any players that are being drafted and just our overall thoughts as well as our strategy. So we are about 10 seconds underway from rolling right into this. And I will go ahead and roll a question into Stephen. Who are you targeting with that sweet number eight pick right before me? Yeah, first off, let me just say I'm really pumped that I get to go right before you because I know your guys and I'm going to cherry pick you all day here. So be good for me. That. Yeah, that'll be good for me. So, yeah. So at pick eight, I'm gonna look at either Jonathan Taylor or potentially an Aaron Jones, Nick Chubb. Um, that's yeah. what I'm really hoping for to get one of those three. Yeah. Um, it'll be interesting to see actually how the mock draft uh, kind of gets changed up after the injury with Carson Wentz. See where Jonathan Taylor goes. Absolutely. So we've got your big three off the board, now your big four off the board, who I you know, would argue would be uh, the first four in every draft. And then we've got Nick Chubb going number five overall. Mm-hmm. A little bit of Carson Wentz, maybe, that's starting to jump in there. Sure. Tyreek Hill, first receiver off the board at pick six. Let's see. Zeke's off the board at pick seven. Interesting. So I did get my Jonathan Taylor to fall back. And I do now have the scenario where I'm picking JT, Saquon Barkley, or Aaron Jones. That's going to be one of my guys here. I think there's an argument for all three. Um, but, you know, with that first pick, I'm trying to take a guy that can clearly be the best back in the league. Um, and I'm going to go a little bit against the grain and take a guy like Jonathan Taylor, who I said originally. I like the pick. Uh, Mm -hmm. I'm happy because I want Aaron Jones here. So there we go. Uh, Both solidifying the RB position. And and I do like the pick of Jonathan Taylor around, you know, eight, nine, and 10. Uh, I think, you know, he still presents that same fantasy value. So I think it's a good pick. And I think you're staying true to your uh, team there as well. So let's see. Between between the two of us, the running backs are going to go quick. Um, But with that said, it is it was very close for me taking Saquon Barkley Um, injury concerns is the primary reason I didn't, but the fact that he does fall that far now is pretty attractive. So I am on the board as we've seen. I know where you're going. Do you? I do. do I know exactly where you're going. Uh, Yeah, I'm going to do it. It's this going to be interesting because it's a snake draft, uh, which most drafts are where you're going to pick before me and then I'm going to pick before you in the next round. So I'm uh, sticking to the running backs and I'm taking Najee Harris all day, man. So typically here, I'm going to go to RBs. Um, I am looking though at what other options are receiver. You got Devontae Adams, Justin Jefferson, DeAndre Hopkins actually. Um, And so with that being said, I'm going to just be a little different here and I'm going to go ahead and say, Let's get Devontae Adams. Really sure we're up a top guy, receiver, and running back. Yeah, I did check the receivers right mm-hmm. before making my selection. Um, and, you know, I don't hate going RB receiver if you believe that the receiver is available in comparison to the running backs at that, uh, you know, second pick overall uh, for your team. If you believe those receivers just present more value than the running backs available. So I do think it's a good selection and someone who's going to be an absolute monster in PPR leagues this year. And uh, so we've seen uh, pretty typical selections uh, after Devontae Adams. You've got Clyde Edwards, Alaire off the board, AJ Brown, Hopkins, Joe Mixon, Justin Jefferson, my guy, uh, DK Metcalf. Now we see Keenan Allen and Patrick Mahomes, the first quarterback off the board 
at selection number 25. Yeah, and kind of to just jump back real to my pick there, it was really comparing Devontae Adams and Clyde Edwards there. Um, typically, I'm going to wait for receiver, especially this year, because there's so much rich talent late in the draft. I uh, know we're both very excited about the opportunities there, that tier five position group uh, for the receivers. Uh, with that said, though, I did feel like Devontae Adams, if I took him early, I can wait even later to take my second string receiver and really load up at running back. So get ready for rounds three onwards. I'm going to be sure that up. And we did see right after Patrick Mahomes went off the board, uh, David Montgomery off the board. That's our guy. That's yeah. our guy right there. I think someone that we, you know, we were both kind of hoping as our third selection in the draft, but I do believe as the draft draws closer and closer that he is going to be moving up on draft boards and in rankings. So uh, kind of let that soak in while you're doing these early mock drafts. I don't think David Montgomery is going to be hanging or lingering around, uh, but some people may disagree. So we still got Darren Waller on the board at the tight end mm-hmm. position, uh, a very flashy name. Uh, will be interesting to see uh, if you or uh, Jacob picks him up. Um, I can tell you it's not going to be me. Um, I'm going to kind of stay away from the tight end position in in my drafts for the most part. So I'm on the clock, and I got Chris Carson, DeAndre Swift, Daryl Henderson, and Josh Jacobs. You know I'm not a big fan of Josh Jacobs this year. Um, I do see some talent later on rounds like Kareem Hunt. I'm going to go RB here, though, for sure. Um, I'm going to add to the consistency of Jonathan Taylor, by taking another consistent back for next season, and that's Chris Carson. I like that pick a lot. Uh, yeah. If you did not select Chris, Chris Carson, that is who I would select with uh, this current pick. I'm going to do something I haven't done in any mock drafts. And I'm just going to take the talent from uh, Darren Waller and kind of see how okay. this shapes out. Uh, that's yeah. going to change your strategy for sure going forward. Oh, absolutely. But, uh, you know, that's the whole point of these mock drafts, right, is to kind of play around and uh, play with some different strategies and uh, kind of put yourself in a position that you're not uh, expecting to be in. Because mm-hmm. when it comes time to draft, um, you might be in a position that you didn't think you're going to be in. So I'll take the talent there and uh, we will go ahead and move uh, along in this uh, round four. Our picks are coming up uh, pretty close. Yeah, and I think another thing also with mock drafts is when you're paying attention to your league, you need to know your league, you need to know your league mates. What position is more important, right? So obviously the running back has a little bit more value by nature, but receiver for that flex spot can be very critical too. And there's some great guys that are coming up here at the receiving position. Absolutely. So I'm going to go ahead and snag who I believe will be the number one receiver on the Rams team this year and Robert Woods. I think that he's going to be a great security blanket for Matt Stafford. So not really my typical draft process here, but I'm kind of, you know, trying to see what I can come up with uh, by just kind of picking the best players available. Yeah, so I like that. Um, you know, looking at this now, I'm very tempted to go Josh Allen, go quarterback here but I'm going to stick to my guns and just try to target carries, draft somebody I'm not loving. That's Miles Gaskin. And I'm going to hope that Kareem Hunt somehow is still there, even though I got a very strong feeling he's not going to be. Yeah. I I like the pick of Miles Gaskin. Uh, I've been doing some research this past week on the Miami Dolphins. And I do think he's a great value, especially uh, looking at your squad with uh, two other sure running backs. I think he's a very good number three uh, running back to have on your team. So I I like the pick. I think it's a good value. Yeah. I will say this though, Um, you know, obviously with the running back position, you need to take them early because there's not a ton of guys that are going to get a bell cow type of running carry opportunities. Um, But if after Kareem Hunt, I'm not truly excited about anybody for quite a while. So I could be pivoting gears here if Kareem Hunt goes to yep. receiver, um, which is something I don't want to do. But um, it's really kind of at that point, you're getting to that point of the draft um, around that fifth and sixth spot where you need to start looking at best player available. 
Um, and some people switch to the quarterback spot here. That's actually what I've done historically is started to target that quarterback, that guy I could see winning your league, um, which honestly, not to do my own horn or anything, but the past three years, baby, Kyler Murray, Lamar Jackson, Patrick Mahomes. So pretty good. Let's see if I do it here again. I was uh, seeing if you're going to forget any of them. Uh, no, I I can't, man. These are my these are my babies. Uh, right here. Three three great selections. I'll give it to you. And I <laughs> yeah. I do think uh, you know that's one thing I've kind of realized uh, in fantasy football is over the past couple of years is I've always drafted quarterbacks late, and I you know I've always been uh, that kind of number three, number four team in the league. Always had good regular seasons, and then I'm just missing. Uh, kind of that X factor, right? And that X factor mm-hmm. is typically the quarterback position. So this year, uh, that is something that I'm looking to fill pretty early on. So we're seeing, uh, we have seen the second quarterback go off the board at pick 45 with Josh Allen. We've seen a couple tight ends go, yeah. uh, George Kittle, as well as Kyle Pitts. But I don't need to worry about tight ends for the rest of this draft. Uh, some receivers going. Mike, Mike Davis. Mike Davis lifted at the top of the fifth round. I think that's a great value. Uh, uh, someone who I had, uh, you know, tar- who I was targeting uh, coming up in this round. So a little disappointing. Now we mm. see Lamar Jackson Lamar go Jackson. off the board. Yep. Yeah, I Lamar think- Jackson was definitely somebody on my, uh, my target list. I think both of us are very high on his potential yeah. next season. Absolutely. So now for me, looking at these quarterbacks, uh, I'm staring at Kyler Murray and then I'm kind of worried about, uh, you know, the kind of the next seeking into that next tier. Cause I'm pretty sure you're going to pick Kyler Murray. So uh, well, let me tell you this right now. I think it's very odd that they have kind of picked around Kareem Hunt. He's still available taking ETN and taking Mike Davis uh, now going out to get Ayuk. Ayuk. It's, it's just kind of weird to see. Well, there's your, doing. there's your boy uh, oh, off the board. Oh yeah. Well, yeah, now I can tell you this. I'm taking, I'm going to go ahead and probably pivot here to quarterback um because Kareem Hunt was kind of the last man standing at running back that I really yeah. loved um Deontay Johnson off the board okay, that's good so here we go drafting Kyler Murray is kind of that main uh strategy that you can go with here I uh, really kind of sure up best player available um there was definitely other options I think if I were to go wide receiver here um a guy like Kenny Galladay definitely has some serious upside being the number yeah. one the fact that receiver on the Giants. However, that is just not what I'm looking for. Wow. So I got auto picks, actually. <laughs> this is this is my game changer because I would not have ever taken this pick. Now you get to take Kyler Murray. That'll be fun. Let's we'll see how oh, this man. goes down. I mean, I feel like I have to do it, right? Uh, you know it, what? Yeah. I'll, I'll forfeit. No, no, no. I'll take, take Kyler. Take Kyler. Take Kyler. I want to see well, how this plays. He wouldn't have been there realistically, so I'm not going to. Okay. I'm going to reach for a guy I want to show up my running back position with James Robinson, um, and I will let uh, either Drew or Joey or Alex uh, pick Um, pick Kyler. Oh, this guy reached. He took Dak Prescott in front of Kyler Murray, so that's interesting. Um, Does he fall back to you in the next round? What do you think? I think no way. No, he just went. Yeah, there he goes. Yeah. Yeah. And like I said, if something like that happens, you know, I want to keep it as realistic as possible. Uh, you know, who would be there? Mm-hmm. And uh realistically, uh Kyler wouldn't be there. Now it obviously affects your mock draft in a completely different way. <laughs> oh uh, my gosh, that's brutal because literally now I'm in a situation where it's like yeah. you know, Hawkinson, I actually do think is a great player. So this isn't a knock on him, but just not my strategy at all. Yeah. Um, I typically would target tight ends at like maybe rounds eight plus. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, kind of sure up the receiver position, maybe uh, a tiny bit of a reach, but I feel like the safest selection here and uh, Robbie Anderson, I'm just going to, you know, a couple other guys I'd be looking at at that mm-hmm. position there would definitely be uh, Jamar Chase, uh, Odell Beckham, and the two uh, receivers on the Steelers, as well as DJ Chark. So a couple of good receivers. Yeah. So looking at my picks here, uh, the running backs are just really not that attractive for me right now. Um, I'm going to take a receiver with upside as much as I don't want to. And that's going to be Odell Beckham, who has been a stay away from me for a long time, but um, best receiver on the board. Um, And I decided to take him over Jamar Chase 
purely for I'm in love with this Browns offense next season, and I didn't sure. get a taste of it with Kareem Hunt like I wanted. Sure. <laughs> Just some interesting drama there with Stevens. Uh... Yeah, man, auto this pick. Is, <laughs> gosh, that it, it's. But hey, that's also a that's a warning for your drafts, man. Don't yeah. be molly gagging and boom jangling during your pick, man. Yeah. Um, because you can get screwed like that. Absolutely. And also, cue your damn picks because I should have done that. Um, you are adamant about your queuing. I don't do it, and. Pfft, that's what happens. Well, really, I uh, I just this is around the time where I start maybe a little bit earlier, um, but I just started you know for this current mock draft uh, putting together a little little queue here. So uh, it has so much so much depth at the receiver position. It's, 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 I almost wish that I did select Robbie Anderson. That I reached for a quarterback back there. Uh, even a guy like Russell Wilson, I think. Just when you start to look at the receivers, there's, you know, and you already have a number one guy like a Robert Woods or in your case, an even better number one, mm-hmm. like a Devontae Adams. I mean, do you really need anything else, especially with how many names are going to come up on the waiver wire like they do every single year? So let's see. Yeah. We'll give, go ahead. The running back position now. Um, I think Damian Harris just went and that was who I was targeting for my next pick if he'd fallen to me. I think Damian Harris, you know, kind of gets a toxic cloud put over his name because of how the Patriots have handled the backs and their history. But the buzz out of camp is that this guy's going to be a killer on the field. He's been yeah. just destroying every single time he gets the ball. So I actually think this is going to be the first time that the Patriots have a clear cut number one back. He's certainly not going to get out touched by Sony Michelle. That's for damn sure. What are your thoughts yeah. on him? No, I think he's a great value and he's being uh, completely underrated from a fantasy standpoint, uh, you know, almost dis- disrespected. I mean, uh, he mm-hmm. is a number one running back. Uh, he might not be on the best team. He might not be on the most run heavy team, but he is certainly going to be the number one running back on that squad. Um, you know, I know that Cam Newton is going to take away. I mean, Cam Newton had 12 rushing touchdowns last year. Uh, but still, you know, Damian Harris is, you know, at the, his floor, you know, very bottom is going to be like 800 rushing yards and six touchdowns. Uh, so to get that in the, the seventh or eighth round, uh, is a very, very good, uh, fantasy value. So I totally agree with that. Yeah. But as we start to monitor, we're just getting a good mix, a little bit of a run on tight end here in round seven, uh, you know, outside of Aaron Rodgers. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Gosh. I think ah. we're both targeting the same guy there. Oh, my gosh. Ronald Jones just went off the board. And right before that, too, I was going to try to do the stack with Aaron Rodgers. Um, and he uh-huh. went as well. So now I'm looking at my running backs, and I am not happy with them. Um, I think the best case scenario here is you get a guy like Melvin Gordon or David Johnson. Um, and a receiver, you got Juju, who I know is on your queue. And to be honest, look at quarterbacks, Justin Herbert. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and take my guy, Justin Herbert. Yeah, hey, I like that selection. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and take uh, Melvin Gordon because I do think he presents the, the best value at the running back position. And that is where I am loading up right now. So Mm -hmm. I have kind of forfeited uh, the quarterback position. So pretty soon here, I am going to have to start thinking about taking one of those guys. Yeah. I, I, at this point, I I do think it's something that he does not go, you should really be targeting Tom Brady. Um, You know, we'll, we'll link the NFC South video. This is a guy that can be the MVP of the league next year, loaded offense and you can get him so late. That was who I actually I was wanting to get. Just felt rushed and took Justin Herbert. Yeah. But uh, I think Tom Brady is a league winner because you're getting so late. Probably some of the best value at the quarterback position. Yeah, he's going to have a phenomenal, phenomenal second year. Now with Ryan Tannehill being selected in round seven and pick eighty four, uh, I'm definitely starting to sweat because I was going to kind of try and wait and see if he would fall out to the uh, till the next round. So at this point, uh, we'll see who Joey and now Drew need. Joey taking the first defense in the L.A. Rams, who hold mm. the 
best defensive lineman in the league, as well as the best cornerback in the league. And uh, two players in the Madden 99 squad this year Mm -hmm. and Aaron Donald and Jalen Ramsey and also a very very good defense that did not get drafted in fantasy leagues last year uh, and came up off the waiver wire so uh, look for that to happen again this year and there goes the Washington football team with our boy uh, Tom Brady still defense this early Never like I say, with our boy Tom Brady still on the board. Uh, and I'm really scared looking at the quarterback position. After Tom Brady, I feel like there is a significant drop off. So mm-hmm. I'm going to go ahead and just sure that up and come back to it. I, I think there's a lot of safe quarterbacks left. Uh, and Matthew Stafford and Joe Burrow, I think, present the next best value. And you still got Kirk Cousins and even guys like Fitzpatrick. Uh, kind of lingering around and my guy big Ben Roethlisberger with one of the easiest schedules for fantasy quarterbacks this year uh, but oh you're drafting did you know that honestly it's a boring pick just took a volume did um, you know you were uh, drafting Steven yeah I queued him up oh, okay David okay Johnson. good yeah I was getting I, worried sorry sorry no I queued him up I didn't even think there was really anything to talk about here I think at no. this point my team is just kind of trying to get that you know, stable consistency at running back before we start really reaching for upside um, sure. because of how this draft, the way it shaked out. Um, sure. I really was able to kind of hit every single position group early, um, which kind of limited my upside picks that a lot of, sure. you know, like you focused on, you, you pick some of the upside guys early to stack at a position like a running back or something. That's what I like to do. But now I'm really looking to, uh, finally start jumping into that upside pick later in the draft. Yeah. And this is, uh, you know, you could argue this last round or two as well, but at this point in the draft, this is what's going to make or break your fantasy mm-hmm. football season. These are the most important picks. If there's a lot of people out there who kind of stop paying attention at this point, uh, but this is where you really need to lock down and, and know what's going on and know who's available. So this is where you separate the men from the boys. And that's the one way the to girls, put it, man. Yeah, this is this is how you do it right here. Oh, yeah. um, because in all your casual drafts, like the non pros, this is where a lot of people tune out. You know, what I mean? sure. like you're in your friends' drafts or something. People are sure. six or seven beers deep at this point. They're they're like, who the hell is a Gallup? You know what I mean? They're they're not really paying attention. But th- if you've done your research in the summer, you listen to our podcast. This is where you win it. You win your prize at the end. Absolutely. So we see a couple more defenses, and now there's a little bit of bots at play as we see Justin Tucker off the board, uh, but could certainly happen as well. And if you have one friend who skips out on the draft uh, and just auto drafts, expect a kicker to go pretty early um, as we see some defenses and kickers going. And Robert Tanyan kind of mixed in there, someone uh, who I was actually eyeing at this point had just added him to my queue because I'm not afraid to draft uh, two tight ends or two stud tight ends if you can flex one. So, so. here's a new guy that I haven't really dug into a whole lot. Um, we are going to be covering the AFC East this week on the podcast, but Michael Carter with the Jets. Um, yeah. This is a guy who I think has a great opportunity to take a ton of carries with the Jets. Sure. Got a great upside. Um so yep. this is a Jets offense that has invested a ton into the offensive line over the past year and a half, uh, two years really. Um, and with Zach Wilson, if he's even average, above average, Michael Carter sees even more value as a base floor. But here's the other thing, the X factor with this guy, he can catch passes out of the backfield at a pretty high clip. So Michael Carter is somebody that I think is rising on my boards and I'm hoping that I – oh, and there he goes. So <laughs> I don't get him, but he goes right before me, actually. Um, and I am now in a position where I'm going to take another guy who's dry, rising up on my boards here, and that's going to be Curtis Samuel. I'm going to take him. And the reason for that is Antonio Gibson also is having this kind of nagging injury where his toe is all messed up. He's kind of had this for a while. Um, and so I think JD McKissick, Curtis Samuel, these guys that can kind of play that flex spot, um, are going to become more and more important to this Washington football team offense. So, yeah, I think that's a great pick. Um, there are two players I really like right here. Two players that I really like a lot right here. 
Uh, I am going to stick with my gut that I'm going to draft Kenyon Drake. Uh, mm-hmm. the, the other guy that I like is uh, Jerry Judy. I really like that value. He went right off the board after my selection. Um, but I, I just think that there's more depth at the receiver position at this point in the draft. And uh, it just I think it's more worth it to take the upside running back. As much as I like Jerry Judy and as much as I'm looking at these two receivers on my team, and they're not my favorite receivers, uh, but I think they're they're just fine as well. So that uh, these next picks are starting to creep up on us as we see. Uh, Where are you more. looking? Whoa. Looking receiver? Nope. I'm going to take a guy that you probably <laughs> want. And I'm sorry about it. Uh, I am going to go ahead and select uh, James Conner, who I think is going to, you know, kind of add to, I mean, my bench right now is uh, Melvin Gordon, Kenyon Drake, and James Conner. So I'll take all that upside boomer bust potential at the running back position behind Aaron Jones, Najee Harris, and James Robinson. And mm-hmm. I'm feeling very good about that squad at the moment. Yeah, I'm taking a guy, new recent injury buzz coming out here. We're going to cover this again in an upcoming podcast with breaking news, but Devontae Smith um, has an injury. I'm going to take a shot because he's the highest value, biggest upside receiver uh, left on the board, in my opinion. Um, And I think it's currently like a two-week injury. So I'm really banking on the fact that he's fully healthy week one. And sure. uh, I get a clear cut number one receiver that has maybe the best raw and tangible skills that we've seen out of a college football player during the draft. Yeah, I think that's a good pick. I think he could certainly uh, solidify himself as uh, the number one receiver on that team, you know, as long as he can stay healthy. Mm-hmm. At this point in the draft, uh, you know, you're going to see a lot of skilled players start to go. Maybe a couple more quarterbacks go. Uh, and anyone who's maybe not selected a defense uh, start to look at those, too. So Michael Thomas, a big name off the board. I do like his value, you know, around round 10. Uh, we don't know exactly how much time he's going to miss. We do know he's going to miss some time. But I really like the value and potential of snagging a number one receiver on the backhand of the season where fantasy playoffs do occur. I think it's a good pick. Now at the top of round 11, we've got Jarvis Landry off the board, someone else who in terms of PPR, I think is a good value here. And this is where things get real dicey. You're going to see. Yeah, for for sure. I mean, here's, here's the situation. I already talked about Michael Carter um, on the jets. I'm now targeting another jet player. Uh, Do you know who that might be? Receiver position. Corey. Davis. Uh, that's what uh, I thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, main target at uh, at receiver for this Jets team. I never want to target too many Jets guys, that's for sure. But sure. because I don't have Michael Carter on my team, I don't have to worry about over-concentration on a crappy team. And I can take this guy because I do think he's a hell of an athlete, hell of a player, who's great on the Titans. Um, and, you know, he's going to see high volume. So I'm hoping he's there. Absolutely. And he is there, so I'm going to be able to take him. This will be my pick. Um, and what we're really hoping for here is that he does emerge and stay at that number one wide receiver spot. I think he's got some competition that could kind of emerge throughout the season, uh, like Elijah Moore. Elijah Moore, I think, is going to see a ton of touches. And as somebody, you can definitely get really late in drafts. Do you think it's a, it's a good pick overall? I'm a little torn. There's two players that I really like here. I did like Antonio Brown, who got uh, selected uh, just three picks ago. Uh, I want to do something interesting that I might regret because there's someone else uh, in the next couple of selections who I really like. But I'm going to go ahead and take a value pick here. The last, in my opinion, top value at this position and take Mike Gusecki. Uh, since Ooh. in our league, we do... Uh, flex a tight end and on this roster uh, we can flex a tight end so I think uh, you know just imagine if he really takes off in that offense he'd have had a lot of additions in the offseason uh, and you know I do think he's a great value here and a little bit higher of a value than any running back or receiver so I'm happy with that selection even yeah, with Darren no. Waller uh, being someone I took very early in this draft so yeah no I don't think you know when you get a guy like that it's so late in the draft, I don't think there's really much more to say about it. I mean, high va- you take the highest value. Um, right now, that's the kind of thing you're shopping for. 
Um, I'll tell you this, uh, you know, you made a video about Michael Gallup, certainly an intriguing asset coming up here. Just got picked. Yep. Just got picked. Um, I was actually going to steer clear from him now, but I, well, I will to- say, uh, sorry to interrupt, but, uh, don't worry, because your boy Adam Trotman still on the board, but uh, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's my big value at the end of the draft. Um, or is it your, oh, you you went quick, huh, Mike Williams? You were you were really gunning for that. Yeah, I probably uh, could have given you more time, but uh, no, yeah, no. I, I'm uh, that's who I was actually referring to. My last selection was Mike Williams. I wasn't sure if he was going to slide. I am seeing more and more people start to target him, and. Uh, I have seen people start to reach for him and he's on the board. I think he's going to have a great uh, year with uh, second year with Justin Herbert, so as long as he can stay healthy. So, yeah. So with my pick, I'm taking Miko Hartman with the Kansas City Chiefs. I've been really kind of eyeing this guy. Um, still seems to be the only other wide receiver on this Chiefs offense that I could see breaking out. Probably one of the highest athletic pr- profiles that you can see at that receiver position too. Um it is interesting to see that I took him before Waddle. Um, and the main reason for that being is I hell with more, I, I trust Mahomes a hell of a lot more than I trust Tua. Um, and I also like the fact that he's got limited competition at that receiver position, whereas Waddle's got a loaded, loaded position group. Sure. Yeah, I, I like the selection there. I think it's a good value as well. Uh, you really hope that, you know, McCall Hardman can kind of step up and really solidify that number two receiver position. Well, I guess you should, you could argue number three, definitely a number three there uh, with Travis Kelsey in that rotation. Uh, But you just like to see another guy on that chiefs offense, you know, kind of step up and become, uh, you know, a a sure target every game for Patrick Mahomes. So hopefully he can make that leap this year. Oh, Hey, Carson Wentz is uh, available. Steven, (laughs) I'm still targeting uh, actually the receiver position as where I think I need uh, some more depth. So I've got a couple guys that I really like uh, that I'm adding to my queue here. And I think for you, uh, unfortunately, there are no running backs really. Uh, well, there's yeah. a couple, there's one or two, maybe three in PPR leagues that I would argue for here. So um, yeah, uh, let me just say the one guy I did have my eye on almost took with my last pick was Naheem Hines. And that's yeah. mostly because I already had Jonathan Taylor. Um, we talk about it in the breaking news podcast of Carson Wentz being hurt that I do think he minds uh, potential performance for next season is slightly elevated because I think he's going to see more touches um, just being in the slot and at the backfield. Um, but he went before I could take him. Um, so that's why I didn't. Uh, and I'm not as uh, likely to take a guy like Marlon Mack. Uh, yeah, J.D. McKissick just went off the board. That's one of the guys that I would start to target. And oh, PPR sure. leagues, yeah, at this point. Uh, and then Rashad Penny would be the next one. I think Rashad Penny is going to be a lot more involved in that Seattle offense than people are anticipating this coming year. Oof. So I don't know if you can see. I've got Jalen Waddle who fell to me, and I still got McKill Hartman like I was talking about. Um, and I think I'm, I think I'm going to take him because the only other guy I would look at here is potentially Rashad Bateman or a guy like uh, Elijah Moore. Let me yeah. Go ahead and take. Yeah, I think it's a good pick. Uh, and I think that Miami is going to have a lot of fantasy value this year. There's going to be a lot of targets going around as long as Tua uh, can stay healthy and start to perform. So mm-hmm. I've got two guys kind of on my board here. Um, and I like both of them a lot. I'm just going to go ahead and snag Nelson Aguilar. Uh, the other guy would be, uh, excuse me, uh, I've got the wrong person on my board. Uh, I had Perryman out of Detroit on my board, and uh, I'm not super big on uh, that Lions offense, although I, I do oh, understand. Yeah. Yeah, you don't yeah. want to join me in the Lions share. Of yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I'm really glad I didn't. Uh, select him uh, because I, I was uh, meaning to put Rashad Bateman on my queue mm-hmm. uh, and not uh, Rashad Perryman. So here, are you planning I, on taking him up coming? Uh, uh, you know, at, at that point, I'd be forfeiting a kicker, which I do in a lot of my my mock drafts. Uh, and I, the one thing I did do before making this decision that I'm about to make in 20 seconds is I did check what defenses are available. 
Uh, I've seen in some drafts Miami float to this point, which I don't understand at all. Uh, They put up 143 points on average last year um, as a defense, and I I just don't understand the disrespect even with some offseason changes there. So I will forfeit a kicker, and I will pick up Bateman, who I think is going to be moving up and up on draft boards as the season gets closer. Then with my final pick, I'll probably select uh, just a random defense but sure. Um, I'm actually kind of curious to see what you think of my next pick here. I'll just describe him real quick without his name being dropped. Young receiver, hell fast, limited touches last season on a crappy sure. team. Henry yeah. Ruggs was the guy I picked and yeah. I'm word out of camp is this is a guy they're going to try to feed in large volume next season. Sure. Yeah. I think there's definitely some upside there. I don't, you know, if you want to snag a receiver at this point in the draft, he's as good as you're going to get, right? So I, I don't hate the pick whatsoever. I think it's uh, it could definitely work out. But I, uh, it was between him and uh, Traquan Smith with the Saints, um, and sure. I, I saw him as a probably a better value. But I think if Henry Ruggs actually comes in and gets a lot of screen touches, and they actually do make him a very important part of this offense. Um, I think Henry Ruggs really the, is, the ceiling is extremely high for this guy. So I just realized that on team defenses, I was like slightly scrolled down and Miami was available. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I don't know if they're going to slide out of this. And even if they do, uh, you might select them before me. Um, but I think this brings up a good conversation real quick. Though. What's the main thing you look for in a defense? Um, I will say one of the things I try to take a look at, um, because I do pick them with my last pick, is who they're playing in week one. Um, outside of that, though, I do really like to take a look at what is their division like. Um, sure. Who are they going to be playing most often? Um, and I think that's kind of a, one of the primary things to look at when drafting your defense because there is so much regression built into defenses year over year that you can't bake on a top three defense to repeat as a top three defense. You, sure. you just can't do it. Um, sure. That's that's one of the most sure known things in fantasy football. Yeah. Um, so with the defense, with that kind of strategy in mind, um, I'm actually a little bit less inclined to take a defense like the Patriots or the Dolphins because I think Josh Allen's really good. I think the Patriots are going to be better, um, and I think the Jets are going to be better. Um, so I'm looking for a division where it might get weaker. Yeah, I think it's a fine strategy. Yeah, and, and for me, it's just uh, I, I really don't care at this point. Like, yeah. uh, that's also not a bad strategy. Uh, yeah, like I, I will stream a defense week after week and someone will emerge. Uh and, and I just don't I just don't worry about it. I understand the value of, of getting a good defense in, uh, but I there's just so much more value and skill, you know, position players uh that I, I just don't stress about it. Yeah. Um I'm honestly just going to take Chicago's defense here because they play against Detroit twice. Because of uh, the 1985 Bears. Good pick. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, th- I thought maybe enough time for regression to build back into the model. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, and when I am looking at these defenses, wow, I didn't know that Seattle put up 100 points last year. That's pretty decent for them. I will uh, say, defense that I see being a lot better next season is the Chargers. Well, here, I'll take them for you. Yeah. Uh, I mean, do you agree, though? I mean, it's so much health coming back to this defense. I do think you they will Derwin be better. James back there. I, oh, my gosh. Cincinnati had 45 points defensively last year. Detroit whoa. at 35. That's awful. Oh, sorry. I'm just looking at that real quick. But that, that concludes a uh, pretty fun mock draft. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pull up uh, – I'm going to pull up my team first. Uh, so ended up with Tom Brady at the QB position, Robert, Robert Woods, as well as Robbie Anderson. I got both the Robs in there at the receiver positions for my number one and number two. Uh, and I'm very, very happy with this running back uh, situation. I've got Aaron Jones and Najee Harris. I think they're both going to get fed the football on two good offenses. Uh, and then, you know, outside of that, I've got James Robinson, Melvin Gordon, Kenyon Drake, and James Conner, so a lot of upside, a little bit of boomer bust potential, but I'm happy with it. And I'm also not so upset at the receiver position because I've got Darren freaking Waller who fell mm-hmm. to me, and I'm 
Yeah, I'm very happy. I think that, you know, kind of solidifies this team overall. And I've still got Mike Gusecki on the bench. So I think that's, you know, essentially uh, close to the value of a number one receiver or maybe closer to number two, but I'm happy with that. And I like these three, you know, last receivers I snagged a lot of upside between Mike Williams, Aguilar, and Rashad, Rashad Bateman. So I like this team. I don't know how you feel about it, but I think it turned out pretty solid. And I will go ahead and now pull up your squad. You've got the man, the myth, the legend, Justin Herbert at the helm. Mm-hmm. Uh, you've got the, well, actually, you know what? I'll let you break down your team. I'll let you go. Through yeah, this. no, I mean, um, so I love Justin Herbert. I think he is a guy that could be in that MVP running. You see that a lot of that breakout in that second year quarterback type of spot there. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty high on him. Like I said, it was really neck and neck between him and Tom Brady, um, Devonte Adams. I'm actually even more excited about the fact that I got him. Um, you know, like I said, I went back and forth. Do I want Clyde Edwards? Do I want to go running back? Stick to my draft strategy. I think I got the best value here. Um, so I'm happy about that one. Odell Beckham, uh, he, he's going to be kind of my wide receiver too. Um, but at the end of the day, I think if Odell Beckham can get back to 85% of the OBJ that we know, this is a, this is a wide receiver one type of player. Um, and on a top offense, uh, I want that. I want that exposure. Um, sure. And I think you can get him reasonably, reasonably late. Um, Jonathan Taylor, this is my foundation. This is everything. If he goes down, my team can be hurting in a hurry. So let's hope that he ends up being a top 10 pack. Cause if he doesn't, I'm going to have to be really itching for the the waiver wire early. Um, Chris Carson, this is a guy that I think both of us have a little bit of interest in just purely because it carries. And I think this offensive coordinator shake up with the Seahawks. I think they want to run the ball. Is that they're gonna feed this man? He is. I don't know if you have you seen his workouts. This yeah. guy can oh, yeah. lift some crazy amount of weight. Yeah, I'm huge um, on Chris Carson. Oh yeah. Yeah. As long as he yeah. can stay healthy, I think he's. Yeah, that's uh, huge. I mean, I think he could argue he's a top twelve running back if he can stay healthy. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think my running back core does have some top twelve, uh, maybe two guys out of the top twelve, which is what you really would want to have. Sure. Um, Hawkinson, <laughs> I, uh, my my fantasy fudge pick of the day. Yeah, but um, I but think uh, I think it good. helps solidify this roster a little bit. I think it it turned out in your favor, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, like I said, like this this wasn't you had to kind of adjust fire, you know, as you saw what happened. You know, I had to switch up my draft strategy a little bit, but. Hawkinson basically is going to be the guy out of Detroit and every team, no matter how crappy they are, they need a guy. Um, so I think he's a stud. I think he's a stud, probably a top five, 10 this year. Yep. Um, and then you got Miles Gaskin. Uh, Miles Gaskin and David Johnson, both these guys are really, I think, just, um, you know, I wanted volume at the running back spot because sure. you've got a guy like Chris Carson who is going to maybe see some injuries throughout the season. So I need a guy who I can just plug and play, right? Plug and play. Or maybe I want to load up against a competitor that has some like real, real burst type of players. I want to get my flex in both my running back spots kind of loaded with carries that week. Um, So that's kind of the way I attack both those rounds. Um, You just went receiver heavy, man. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, look at yeah. this. Look at this coming up here. I mean, oh, Curtis yeah, Samuel, Devontae yeah. Smith, Corey Davis, Michael Hartman, Jalen Waddle, Henry Ruggs. Um, I will say this, outside of Curtis Samuel and Devontae Smith, it was all upside potential here. Sure. Um, I do think a guy like, uh, you know, Henry Ruggs uh, has a serious amount of potential that I was talking about. But um, Curtis Samuel, I think, has a real chance to be a serious player for this Washington football team offense especially, like I said, with Antonio Gibson kind of having this injury. But he's a very exciting tool, and he was a part of that Ron Rivera team when Ron was there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think in terms of uh, PPR leagues, I think, you know, your roster turned out not too shabby. So uh, I think it was better than yours. I think it was better than yours. Oh, there's an argument there. Yeah, yeah. I think it was yeah. better than yours. Okay. I, I really like my squad, but, uh, you know, and I stuck true to my strategy for the most part, although I did pick uh, Darren Waller there, which kind of, you know, a little bit definitely different from what I do. So I think we both – Waller, though. The sure. Walrus is huge oh, yeah. uh, incentivized. I mean, the guy yeah. gets like 20 touches a game. Oh, yeah. I think we both diverted just a little bit from – our regular uh, strategy here. And I think it was good practice. Absolutely. And, you know, 
that's kind of the important thing to start doing uh, now as opposed to later is start kind of messing around with some different strategies and put yourself in some positions that, uh, you know, you're not sure if you're going to be in because you never know what's going to happen mm-hmm. come actual draft day. So we will cap off this mock draft for you guys if this was helpful in any way please go ahead and smash that like button down below and consider subscribing to the channel for more future content as well as our annual The Catch podcast. We thank you all so very much for uh, watching and listening, and we wish you all the most of luck in your respective fantasy leagues this year. For myself, I will go ahead and say goodbye, and I will hand it over to our Colts fan who's having a very bad day, Stephen, to say goodbye as well. Hey, man, it's been a rough day, but the thing that lifts it up is just doing a mock draft, man. We got football coming around the corner. Um, You know, just like you said, give us a like. I would consider subscribing uh, because we're going to start really pushing out some uh, videos here at a pretty high clip because fantasy football is right around the corner, baby. Let's get it going. All day. So remember, you saw it here on The Catch.